Hello students, it's Mr. Hargrove, and I wanna welcome you to another version of Mr. Hargrove's math class, where today we're gonna to be talking about comparing populations. The learning target and success criteria read as such. In this lesson, we will compare groups of numerica data using double dot plots and box plots. Students will know that they are successful when they can accurately compare the shape centers and spreads of the box plots and dot plots using verbal descriptions. So we can compare the data distribution of a graph in three different ways. We can use the spread, the shape, and the center. In today's lesson, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. So let's start with the spread. When we talk spread, spread is dealing with how stretched or squeezed the data distribution is on the graph. And typically when we compare spreads, we use the range. So if we look at this example, we're gonna compare um, the speeds of cars in miles per hour on Hayes Road versus Jefferson Road, and we're gonna use the range. Now, when we're dealing with box plots, we can actually use two different ranges, and you do need to know how to use both. You can use the inner quartile range, which you recently learned about. We're going to call that the IQR, stands for inner quartile range. That is simply looking at only the box, where it starts, where it ends, where it starts and where it ends. So if we look at the inner quartile range, we'll see that the box starts at around, for Hayes Road, it starts at around 50. So we'll put 50 here and it ends at around 60. So we would say that it has an inner quartile range. We're just gonna do 60 minus 50. It has an inner quartile range of 10. Whereas if we look at Jefferson Road, it has a, the box starts at 40, ends at 55. So we can do the same thing. Um, we're just gonna do 55 minus 40, and that's gonna give me 15. So we can see that Jefferson Road's inner quartile range is spread out a little more. When you look at that one, uh, the Hayes Road is 10, Jefferson Road is 15. So the speeds are, are more spread out. Now, that's the inner quartile range, but you can also look at the overall range. And that is gonna be where you look at the upper extreme and the lower extreme, or the minimum and the maximum. So if we just go to the end, we can look right here. And I'll just, um, yeah, easier if I just get rid of some of this data. So if we look at the overall range, we see we have 65 as the upper extreme and the lower extreme is 45. So we can just do 65 minus 45, and that's gonna give me a range of 20 for Hayes Road. And then if we look at Jefferson Road, we're looking at 65 and 30. So again, we can do 65 minus 30, and that's gonna give me 35. So again, Jefferson Road is more spread out. I can say Jefferson Road has a higher range uh, of, of speeds um, because it's 35 versus 20 for Hayes Road. So that's comparing populations using the, uh, the range when you're dealing with box plots. And now we can move over to dot plots and do something similar. We are just gonna, and if we look at this one, it's quiz scores and points, second period versus fifth period. Um, so let's compare the range. And this is telling us how spread out the scores were. Again, we can look at the range and we just look at the upper extreme and the lower extreme and just subtract. So if we look here, this one has an upper extreme of 18, lower extreme 
of 14. So again, to find that range, I can for second period, 18 minus 14, it's going to give me a range of four. Then I can do the same exact thing for second period. It has a maximum of 20, minimum of 14. So I just find the difference between them, and that is six. So I would say that fifth period has a greater range than fourth than second period. So that just means, again, the scores were more spread out. Um, the quiz score scores. Now we can talk about shape. When we talk about comparing uh, data based on shape, you're going to use either the term symmetrical or skewed. So we'll jump into what those words mean. If it's symmetrical, what that's saying is, is each half of the graph is a mirror image of the other. And sometimes it's going to be a mirror image. Sometimes it's, it's not going to be exactly a mirror image, but it'll be close. Like if we look at this, um, at this distribution here, if I split it down the middle, it's not exactly the same on the right and left, but it's very, very close. So I would say that that data is symmetrical. Same thing here on the box plot. If I split it down the middle, um, what's on the right looks very much similar to what's on the left. And anytime data is not symmetrical, that means that it's skewed. Skewed means that more data is on one side of the graph than the other side. So uh, if a data distribution is skewed right, that means that most of the data is on one side. So if we look here, most of the data is here. But because there's two data points out here, it's created a tail. So since a tail has been created, I would say that the data is skewed right. So because there's a tail on the right, and it's the same thing on, the, on this one, most of the data is here, but since there are some points on this side, it creates a tail, and since there's a tail on the right, it's skewed right. And if we look down here, we see a tail on the left, so it's skewed left. Tail on the left, skewed left. Easy way to remember skewed. If you see a tail, whatever side the tail is on, that's the direction that the data is skewed. So let's look at this in action. We'll go back to the same example of the speed of cars on Hayes Road and Jefferson Road. And we're going to this time compare the shape of the data. So if we look at Hayes Road, it looks like the Hayes Road, if I split it down the middle, what's on the right looks very much similar to what is on the left. So I would say that this is symmetrical, Hayes Road. Now, if I look at Jefferson Road, I, we can say that Jefferson Road is somewhat symmetrical, but I do see what looks like a tail on the right. So I would actually say that this is slightly skewed right. So when I'm comparing this data, I would simply say that Hayes Road is symmetrical, while the data for Jefferson Road is skewed to the right. And let's look at, again, the quiz scores for second period and fifth period. But this time, we're going to um, answer the question of, is it symmetrical or is it skewed? Well, if I split this down the middle, what's on the left? looks very much like what is on the right. In fact, this time it is a mirror image. So that is symmetrical. And let's do the same thing down here. We'll split the data. And again, it looks like we have symmetrical data. So for this one, for both second and fifth period, I would say both are symmetrical. And that is going to be the answer on comparing the shape for these two data sets. Both are symmetrical. Now we can look at the center. The final way that we're going to compare data is looking at the center. Now when we look at the center, the, the key thing that you want to look at is the median. So when you're trying to compare the center points, look at the median. And that's what we're going to use to compare. So let's get back to 
this example with speeds of cars on Hayes Road versus Jefferson Road. This time we're just going to compare the median. And we know that the median is here on the box plot. So we have a median of 55, whereas for Jefferson Road, we have a median of 45. So if we make a comparison, we can say that the median speed on Hayes Road is 55 miles per hour, while the median speed on Jefferson Road is 45 miles per hour. And that is a comparison just using the median. So Hayes Road obviously has a higher median speed. So that means that you're more likely to go faster on Hayes Road than Jefferson Road. That's just comparing the centers. Same concept when we look at the quiz scores for second period and fifth period, the median is clearly seen here since both these data sets are symmetrical. We have a median of 16 and a median of 17. So I would say that fifth period has a median that is one point higher than second period. And that's a simple comparison using the median. So let's look at some more examples. And in these examples, this time we're going to put all three together. We're going to compare shape, center, and spread. So let's read this problem. It says, Casey randomly surveyed a different group of students in her science and math classes. The double box plot shows the results for both classes. Compare their shapes, centers, and spreads. So again, we're just going to put it all together. And while we do that, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a column here for the shape, a column for the center. I'm just going to use a C for the center. And then when we compare the spread, I'll put that out here. And it'll look like this. So we're looking at the shape. And let's, for the shape, Let's start with the, uh, with the math class, because we're looking at how many times have you sent a text this month, and they're comparing math class to science class. Well, I see a tail on the right, so I would say that the shape for the math is skewed right, since I see a tail on the right. And then if I come down here and look at science class, I see a tail on the left. So for science, I would say that this data is skewed left. I'm probably gonna have to erase that because I am gonna need it to look at the spread. Now let's look at the center. If we look at the center point, I see that the math class has a median of 10. So I can put that for math, there's a median of 10, whereas for science, there's a median of 20. So that means that science is sending a lot more text messages um, on a monthly basis. The median number of texts is two times the number of math class. So one math class is 10, science is 20. So um, science is sending more text messages on average. And then we can look at the spread. Now, if we look at the spread, this is where I said I'm going to do some erasing just to give us a little clearer picture of the, uh, the spread. Let's look at, this time I want to use the overall range, okay? And it looks like they both have an overall range. It looks like they both go from zero to 30. So I would say that the range for both is 30, for both of them. Range is 30 for both. And I know that because they both start at zero and they both go to 30. And I know that 30 minus zero equals 30. So they both have a range of 30. And we also could look at their interquartile range as well, right? 
And if we did, this is what that would look like. If we looked at just the inner quartile range, we would say simply this. For math class, it ends at 20 and the box starts at five. So I'm still talking about the spread. I would say that the IQR is gonna be 20 minus five, which equals 15 is the inner quartile range or the IQR for, for math. And then if I look at science, it goes from 25 to, from 15 to 25. And then if you go ahead and do that math, 25 minus 15 is gonna give you 10. So science class has an IQR of 10. So I say 10 is the IQR for science. So, and you can vis visibly see that math has a higher range, it's more spread out, um, just looking at the data set. So again, that's comparing shapes, center, and spread, putting all three together. Now we can look at this problem. It says the double dot plot shows the number of new emails in each of Pedro's and Annika's inboxes for 16 days. Compare the shape centers and spreads of the two populations. So again, I'm gonna make my column here. We'll go shape, we'll go C for center, and then we'll go spread. We'll just go out here. And we have Pedro and we have Annika and we'll just split the data up that way. So for Pedro, if we look at the shape, it does look like there is a tail on this side. So I would say that for this looks like it is gonna be skewed to the left since the tail is on the left. And then if I look at Annika, it looks like there's a tail on the right. So for Annika, I'm gonna say that this data is skewed right. And if we look at the center, this is where we need to find the median. And again, to do that, I'm actually gonna clear up some of this space. And I'm gonna show you a trick to how to find the median when you can't clearly see it with your naked eye. And here's how, you just mark off dots. So we would mark that off and come over here and go left to right, left to right, till you end up in the center. That will tell you where the median is, which is gonna be right there at 36 for uh, Pedro. Pedro has a median of 36. And then let's do the same thing for Annika. Mark one off here, one off here. And kind of just go left to right until you meet in the center. and it's gonna be right there. So Annika has a median of 32. So we can clearly see that Pedro has a higher median, which means the number of emails in inbox is gonna be typically higher for Pedro. And now we can look at the spread. And again, when we look at the spread, we're just looking at how spread out the data set is. So I'm gonna erase some of this so we can actually get a good look at the spread. So we have it starting here at 32, ending at 37. So I'm simply gonna do that math, 37 minus 32, and that's gonna give me a range of five. Come down here for Annika, we got 38 and we got 30. So I'm just gonna do 38 minus 30, and it gives me a range of eight. So I would say that Annika's data is more spread out. Pedro has a higher median. Pedro's data is skewed left, while Annika's data is skewed right. And that's all we're doing. And we now move to this example, where we are looking at the double box plot shows the cost of MP3 players at two different stores. Compare the shapes, centers, and spreads 
of the two populations. So we're going to do just that. We're going to say, let's look at shape. Let's compare center. And we're just going to use the C for center. We got shape, center, and spread. And this is just a good way to just to keep your work somewhat organized, even though it does get, seem to get kind of messy here. But when we're looking at this, it looks like if we're looking at shape, it looks like electronics world has a tail on the right. So we're going to say for electronics world, skewed right. And if we come down here, looking at bargain basement, I see another tail on the right. So for bargain basement, I'm also going to say skewed right. Always just follow where that tail is. For the center, this is 70 for electronics world, 60 for bargain basement. So you can see which one clearly has the higher median. And now we can look at the spread. And if we look at the spread for electronics world, it goes all the way to 100 and it starts at 55. 100 minus 55 gives me 45. And then if I do the same thing for a bargain basement, it ends at 80 and it starts at 50. 80 minus 50 is 30. So again, if we summarize this data, we can say both data sets are skewed right. The median for electronics world uh, MP3 players is 70, while it's 60 a bargain basement. So it means you're most likely going to spend more money at electronics world on MP3 players. And then if we look at the spread, the spread of the prices is higher at electronics world than for bargain basement. So for bargain basement, the prices are closer to one another. So that's when we talk about spread is how far out the data is, right? So let us look at this example as well. This should be our final problem. It says the double dot plot below shows the daily high temperatures for two cities for 13 days. Compare the shape centers and spreads of the two populations. And this should go pretty quick. So we're going to go shape, center, and spread. Let's just talk about them both real quick. We look at the shape. If I cut them both down the middle, they both look symmetrical. So I would say both are symmetrical. If we look at the center, I've already identified that for the daily high temperatures in Springfield, looks like it is at 81, while at Lake City, it's here at 84. And if we look at the spread, this is where we're just going to do, this is 84 minus where it starts, which is 78. So that's a difference of six. And then if we come down to Lake City, it ends at 87. It starts at 81. And that's going to be a difference of six as well. So if we compare this data, we would say both data sets are symmetrical. The center at uh, daily high temperature at is higher at Lake City. So it means it's more likely to be warmer at Lake City versus Springfield because the median temperature is higher and they both have a spread of six. So that means that the data is not more spread out 
one city versus the other city. So that is all we are doing. So, all right, I wanna thank you for your attention in this lesson and I look forward to seeing you back at the next lesson.